Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible or whenever you happen to be watching. Today I face my nemesis again. You guys know that I have this reoccurring thing. White cobra bites me, so on like that. Well, uh, it's weirdly enough, we have Bruce's cobra in because it kind of messed its nose up a little bit. So uh, we are going to treat it, that's right. So uh, wish me luck, let's go ahead and get started. Again, you know, basically, Bruce, what happened here? Jasmine here is out open when she's, when she's in her cage. Right. So she's been up against the glass, bashing oh. her face a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, like, uh, it's causing her to bleed a lot. And oh my, my, my worry is obvious. I don't want an infection to happen because the last thing I need is to have a COVID with an yeah. infection. Once, on yeah, once they actually get infected, you're definitely in a lot of spooks, especially in that nasal cavity because it can run right up into the nasal cavity, up into the subocular region, and then you're literally looking at surgery. So uh, first things first, Jasmine is normally not this uh, crazy, and I wanted her to just kind of calm down for me here, but she is definitely on the fired upside. So what I'm gonna do is basically have, pin her down with this, right? Now basically, you know, there's also a pinner, which is basically like a stick like this that has a rubber thing here that you can just pin like that. You can also use this side of the stick, but you gotta be careful. Listen, you know, we could either tube the animal, but when you're going towards the front of her mouth, she's obviously going to be going forward in that tube, right? So we don't want that to be a problem, but uh, so necking is probably the next best thing. Now listen, whenever you're gonna neck an animal, you're always taking a risk. We don't wanna take risks if we don't have to, but we want what's best for the animal and we want what's best for us, right? So we're gonna let her calm down for a minute here. We're just gonna hope that we can get her to kinda go back down. Come on, little girl, you're all right. And I'm just going to take my time for sure because the last thing I want to do is take any risks. And a lot of times what we can do is kind of come backwards here. Now we have her grab. The good thing is with the lapids is they don't have long teeth, right? So they're not gonna poke through the back. So I can do a kind of more traditional hold of this animal right here. And again, I'm not messing around. I'm not cowboying up. I really don't want to be holding her this way, but we're gonna do it best. You can see that little wound right on top of her nose. Probably nothing to be really concerned about, but again, if that gets infected, big time of an issue, right? There so we're gonna put some silver sulfadizing on it, which really is good for healing. And uh, we're gonna use a Q-tip, right? Because I don't want yeah, you to yeah. use your finger there. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's up. When you're talking about an animal here that has cardiotoxin, neurotoxin, you definitely do not want to get bit by it. You can see she's got that tongue coming out right now. She's sensing. I'm holding on to her, and she's a pretty strong animal, so we don't want her to kind of spin around on me at all. So I've got a pretty good grip on her, but I'm going to go ahead and let Bruce just get a little bit of that on her nose. There you go, girl. There you go. This is good for you, baby. And that's gonna help her heal up a tremendous amount. Again, we wanna avoid that, like I said, just kind of weird irony that Bruce would reach out to me and say, Brian, can we medicate my white cobra? Just after Kevin over at Nerd, and again, I'll put a link in the description to his King Cobra thing. That was a lot more serious than this. We don't want Jasmine to turn into this. Golly, yeah, that, yeah. honestly, that was actually what I was thinking too, because I was just like, man, I do not wanna to have to deal with this animal when she's like that. No. Like, uh, yeah, like right now it's already kind of scary, but man, yeah. could you imagine if she was like in a lot of pain and yeah. like really just like lashing out and not wanting to be around anybody? Yeah, no, you definitely don't want it. She looks pretty good. You do see a little swelling on the right side, and that's just something that we're going to want to try to keep an eye on. But overall, I think she's going to be fine. That's one of the problems with cobras, especially with monocles, is that they get crazy. They sometimes bash their mouth on the cage because they're just so, they're so visual, right? So regardless, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get her down. Now, this this can be actually some of the most dangerous parts when you're actually grabbing to neck and of course when you're letting go that's when you have to be the most careful and again this is a pretty strong animal so when I'm putting her down she's gonna kind of fight with me just a little bit so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna set her body down and I'm gonna count to three one two three just like that 
And you can see now she's kind of fired up again. It's okay, girl. No harm, no foul. She's completely fine. She doesn't look overly stressed. As a matter of fact, in a weird way, she looks a little calmer than she did when we first had her, which is really good. I mean, she is absolutely a beautiful animal. And I gotta be honest with you guys, the thing that I was very concerned about was that she's normally really well behaved. So I thought that necking her was gonna be pretty easy. And then we pull her out and she was fired up. I mean, she was ready to go. And we definitely don't want that right now. But all in all, we went through this uh you know for, thankfully you know there were a lot of people that i dealt with when i was younger that used to mess with necking snakes for for venom and stuff like that so i've been around it enough and done enough and ironically enough this stick right here this snake hook that i have here it was a little sentimental because this is the one that i actually brought to me to australia when i did venom hunter so this snake hook has seen inland taipans coastal taipans brown snakes you know, red belly black snakes. I mean, it's seen a lot of different snakes. And uh, so I thought, Let, let's just keep the good luck going, right? But Jasmine is beautiful. We'll go ahead and get her back just so that she's all right and stuff like that. And uh, we'll let her calm down. Here you go, girl. I know, baby. It's all right. And I think she's going to be completely fine after this. I think that this will be perfect. And we might have to do this one more time. We'll just have to see how it goes. You know what I mean? And now I'm going to need a bigger bucket. Yeah, she's getting big, yeah, Bruce. She's getting big, bro. She's getting big. I remember when you got her and she was like, she's, like, she's like a little <laughs> tiny girl. So kind of an irony that two white cobras needed some treatment and it's in fact, but listen, like I said, this is not bad at all. This is kind of a preemptive medication, whereas, you know, obviously Kevin's with his King Cobra was pretty serious, and that took a lot of skill to do what he did. Again, I definitely encourage you to watch his video, link in the description, pretty amazing, and I pray that that white King Cobra does well because she is a gorgeous animal, and I certainly want to see babies from her. I know Bruce is going to want to get some baby white ones down the road, so, uh, so that was really cool. But anyways, Jasmine looks good. Uh, we're all safe. She's back in, and uh, we're moving on. All things considered, things went pretty well, but you guys know I told you in the beginning that I had this kind of reoccurring thing uh, about a white cobra. It's just kind of an irony that I'm working with a white cobra with bruises a bunch. So, uh, interestingly enough, the first time I went to go neck the animal, I had to back off because I had a massive deja vu. Give me a second here, because yeah, yeah. I just had some really bad deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, I know when to back up. <laughs> <laughs> when you feel it, yeah, you I don't want to feel like that trying to pin her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was just a, it's just a really bad day job for a second. Cut that. back to a dream. <laughs> yeah. Very unusual for her to be so feisty. Oh, she's like really feisty, yeah. And isn't it interesting that, you know, that deja vu, that kind of reoccurring dream that I've been having for 10, 12 years, maybe 15 years, uh, was so similar in my mind at that moment of the reptarium. I mean, I remember seeing the iguana cage, you know, everything around me. You gotta remember 10 or 12 years ago, this place didn't exist, so the fact that that was in my mind, it's just weird. I don't know that I understand deja vu 100%, but it was weird that that happened, and it did freak me out. Out a little bit but nevertheless uh, let's get back to it you guys know every day I've got to switch my male ball pythons around during the breeding season actually tomorrow they'll get switched back home and uh, get a couple days out just kind of seeing if there's any breeding going on this is an albino clown ball python bred to an albino double head uh, another double head albino right here and you know when it comes to like what happened with that Cobra and stuff like that you know number one I always say and this is a lock right here this is actually a ghost heifer clown bred to a clown head for ghost so it could potentially push some ghost clowns basically what I'm gonna do is just mark that make sure that we know that that is breeding and uh, but my point was is that you know I don't let my fear and trust me I've worked on this really hard I don't let my fear actually stop me from doing what I want to do right but at the same time I don't want to be stupid right I don't want to you know make a, a silly mistake is there some sort of uh, premonition about a white cobra biting me I, I, I don't know or is it just something that is fabricated in my head so when I had that little bit of deja vu the first thing I was going to do is obviously back off here we got another this is actually just a pie bred to a pin for a head for pie and this is the first breeding of the season which is pretty exciting so I'll go back and track that one too but uh, at the same time you know I don't want that fear of oh my gosh what if 
this actually happens. And it is kind of an irony, number one, that Kevin had the white Cobra have an issue, and then Bruce literally texted me last night, and it's like, oh, hey, do you mind if I bring in Jasmine? Uh, she's got a little bit of a bum nose. But the fact is, is that I think that's important for us to, to again, use our instinct and intuition, and that's why I backed up. But at the same time, don't let fear ruin our life, right? We don't wanna have fear control us. And certainly this comes from someone that's dealt with anxiety in particular in the last you know, six, eight months tremendously. And I've been working really, really hard to not allow that fear to overtake me, you know? And, uh, and, and every time something like this happens where, you know, I have that deja vu, something weird, whatever the case may be, this is actually a good opportunity for me to, to claim a victory, right? I was victorious today over fear. I had this fear like, oh, uh oh, wait a second. I've got this premonition about getting bitten by this white cobra. And I could have easily kind of chickened out and said, I don't want to deal with this. And there was a minute that I was thinking about that to be totally honest with you but what would that have done for me here's another really cool breeding this is actually a banana super chocolate bred to a chocolate pinstripe right here beautiful animal absolutely incredible super excited about that one for sure so uh again you know you get those wins and those wins turn into uh you getting away from your fear right it's kind of that exposure therapy thing so uh nevertheless super happy with the way it is and, and i'm really happy also that jasmine doesn't look bad Scuffy nose, a little bit of swelling right here by that fang area, and that swelling is what I'd be the most concerned about because that's the start of potentially an infection if we don't get that down. So I think she's going to be in good shape. We'll keep you guys uh, posted. Like I said, maybe in about seven or ten days we might have to do one more treatment on her, but we'll, again, do that the same thing where we take a lot of precaution. And like I would mentioned when we were doing it, it was actually better for us to actually neck her than put her in a tube because if we put her in a tube what could potentially have happened is uh she could have jotted out that tube you know again the only way you could keep her in the tube where her nose is right at the end of the tube is by holding her tail if you let loose that tail bam now whoever's here is going to get bit so it, you know as much as i don't really like to neck animals i try to stay away from that as much as i possibly can in this case it was the safest for the snake and for us and uh, in the end, it all worked out. What is Drogo doing? Uh, he wants me to feed him. Well, feed him then. I got nothing to feed him. I just came in to say hi. You guys may not know this, but Drogo loves Lori, loves Jay, <laughs> doesn't love me so much. Oh. There you go. There's oh. some food for Drogo. Look at that. Oh, there he is. Hi, Drogo. <laughs> oh, my God. So why did you make him not like me? What did you do? What did you do to him? I didn't do anything. You made him not like you. No, because of this. Because this. of my camera. Every yeah. Every time every you're time. around him, you're just bugging every him. Every single time. You're <laughs> annoying him. You're making noise. So he associates you to bad things. <laughs> How do I make him love me? I want him to love. I want you Drogo to love me. You can't do this anymore. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> well, in a perfect world, we wouldn't be messing with too many venomous snakes that way because again, it's always a little bit dangerous, but this time it worked out well, and I'm sure in the future, I will continue to play it safe and continue to work out well. If you enjoyed this video, as a matter of fact, here's a playlist you can throw through with me doing a bunch of stuff with venomous snakes and big snakes and stuff like that. You can also subscribe to my podcast channel. Do it, just do it. Just hit that subscription button for me. That's my holiday gift, right? Over here, I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel. If you're not, please hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.